My recent column in Brussels Morning deals with the European Banking Union. And breaking news, it is in crisis. And it is in crisis because of a single component, EDIS, EDIS. EDIS is a bad idea. Stay tuned to learn why. Banks, as I've said before, are the most unsafe institutions in the world. Worldwide, hundreds of banks crash every few years. That banks are very risky is easily proven by the inordinate number of regulatory bodies which supervise banks and the activities of banks. We need these regulatory bodies because banks are shaky. As far as banking goes, the European Union is a heterogeneous area with weaker, more vulnerable financial systems in the South and the East. Introducing <coughs> a European Deposit Insurance Scheme, EDIS, EDIS, introducing such a scheme which draws on the national resources of existing deposit guarantee schemes, DGSs. This would penalize countries such as Germany and Austria. And this punitive disparity led to a stalemate, even as other components of the envisaged European Banking Union have fallen into place. EDIS remains controversial. We have supervision in place, SSM, we have resolution in place, SRM, SRM, but EDIS is still being hotly debated and contested. Why? At the heart of this conundrum is a philosophical debate, ethical debate, about who should be left holding the can when banks fail. Shareholders, creditors, management, or taxpayers and savers. Bizarrely, the European Union Commission leans towards the latter solution. Taxpayers and savers should carry the burden, not shareholders, not management, not creditors. And this is this this answer, this philosophy, this this perception is to the evident displeasure of more liquid, austere and disciplined member countries. The Euro European Banking Union seeks to decouple banking risks from geography. Depos depositor confidence would no longer reflect the level of trust or distrust in local authorities. The European Union will become a universal zone, a guarantor and a shock absorber for banks of all sizes, drawing on the resources of national DGSs. This would be similar, of course, to the situation in federated entities such as the United States of America, Mexico, or the Russian Federation. But this is a superficial similarity. The EU is not nearly as homogenous and centrally managed as the United States, either fiscally or monetarily. And don't let me go into Russia or Mexico. Many of the initiatives of the European Banking Union such as the Sovereign Bond Backed Securities, SBBS, they make eminent sense. But EDIS is an exception. It would have an adverse impact on the risk profile of banks in the EU, and it would create a moral hazard in many of its territories, especially in Southern and Eastern Europe. Deposit insurance should be an instrument of last resort. After all legal steps have been exhausted, to recover funds from shareholders and creditors. And even then, it behooves, it behooves the insurance to be limited. Every stakeholder in the banking system need to do their due diligence before they plunge into a relationship with a financial institution. It's their problem. Moreover, deposit insurance ought to reflect local risks and be responsive to idiosyncratic information about the profiles of depositors, lenders, borrowers, and intermediaries in that market. A Europe-wide insurance scheme is liable to foster recklessness and engender deceitful practices in pockets of the industry 
among specific types of lenders and borrowers, or at times of bubbly, irrational exuberance. Rings a bell, I assume. In short, EDs may boost depositor confidence in the short term, but as banking crises proliferate, EDs will come to be seen as a liability among the more sober and responsible members of the unit. Such discontent can lead to a serious rupture in the solidarity of the banking sector as reified by institutions such as the ECB, SSM or SRM. This is a better idea. And the better idea is to group banks by size across the European Union and create a, the EU-wide equivalence of the mutual deposit guarantee schemes among Volksbanks, Sparkassen and Raiffeisen uh, banks in Germany and in Austria. These mutual guarantee schemes have been working for decades and they're great. The industry must bear the brunt of its own miscalculations and misconduct. No one else should. The only way to secure this outcome is to force banks with the same financial profile, for example, small banks, medium-sized banks, etc. So to force these kind of banks across the entire area of the European Union to forge together insurance schemes replete with annual contributions. And these annual premiums payable by the member financial institutions will be based on the bank's own unique risk profile, the risk profile of the bank's domicile and of the geographical distribution of its operations, credit ratings, and the risk profile of the European Union itself, the market risk. These are the equivalents of alpha and beta in portfolio management. The EU-wide schemes will spring into action only when relevant DGSs have failed. At no point will savers, depositors or taxpayers be asked to foot the bill unless all the insurance schemes have exhausted their combined resources, a highly unlikely event. Deposit insurance schemes should be allowed to issue and sell bonds, in other words, to borrow, and they should be allowed to temporarily own equity and debt instruments of failing banks. In short, in some respects, in some respects, insurance schemes should function a lot like modern central banks. It is, is an antiquated concept which penalizes the virtuous to salvage the profligate and the reckless. This is not right. This is not even sustainable in the long run. We need a new idea.